Hey guys, welcome to tonight's stream. Sorry I am getting off to a late start tonight, <clears throat> but we are here and we are going to do some painting tonight. Painting! Because I am behind on some projects and I have been working on them diligently. I am just in that groove. So we're going to paint some Warhammer tonight. Um, I have been working on these Warhammer models for not very long and that's the key thing about it is I've not been putting a bunch of time into these models I've been doing them fairly quickly and I'm looking for there we go I gotta make one quick update here that will make things a little better there we go so we're gonna do some airbrushing we're gonna take some Warhammer minis here and take them from basically just being primed to we're going to take them from this and basically the camera's not going to show this very well I'll show you more here in a moment because I'm not even done with this one yet but I'm going to show you just kind of how some simple highlighting techniques especially on like metallic panels tonight can really kind of brighten up and make your model just look freaking awesome so that's kind of where I'm going uh, going with tonight is I've got to do some work work. So, haha, -ha, here we go. So, hopefully everybody's doing well tonight, having a good night, because I know it is being a crazy, crazy day. And, uh, yeah, we're going to have some fun. Hopefully the audio is doing good, but I am going to jump right to the painting here, because... I'm in a zone and I want to get moving forward. So up here to the right view and you guys can see, you can see it better now. So you got this dreadnought, you can see that darker color, that cool highlighting line. Hey Douglas, glad you just got off work, man. You can see this boring one that I used basically a light green primer to save some time. And a lot of times I'll prime black or gray. Um, this is Army Painter Primer, one of the better, cheaper primers. Um, Vallejo can be very expensive. It works great too. Um, but we're going to get the darker color into it with airbrush, and then I'm going to show you how to use a paintbrush and create this highlight line that you see on there. And then we're going to talk about my favorite gold, because we're going to have to do the gold on there. I want to do some gold over here and do some work on this guy. So... This is going, I'm aiming towards the Dark Angels chapter. That's kind of where I'm going. So that's why one, he's green. And two, I am going to use kind of a simple trick that I've been figuring out. I'm going to use the Dark Angels contrast from Citadel Color. Now, first thing I want to do, just because I have been making a mess the last couple days, I'm going to put on some gloves tonight. Just some five millimeter nitrate gloves that I pick up at Harbor Freight that come in real handy. Good way to keep your hands clean when you're painting. Tonight, that's what I'm going to do. So the first thing I want to do is I want to get this darker color on him. This is not the only vehicle I'm working on. I've got a Razorback I'm working on, and I've also been working on a world. This is the second whirlwind I've been working on. Um, so we got to get this guy caught up to the other two. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to get him caught up tonight. Because he's got to get caught up. And it's going to be pretty simple. I'm going to use my SOTAR 2020. I'm going to make sure my air pressure is where I want it. Which is why I have a little valve here. So I can kind of just feel where the airbrush is. Pressure wise, I don't want a whole lot of pressure coming out of the airbrush. But I don't want too little pressure that I don't get a line either. There we go. Alright. Now, the cool thing about using the contrast paint is it's already thin. Um, I will thin it a little bit, and a lot goes a long way. And this one gets really dark really quick, which you saw the other two vehicles. I got a little bit too dark. Um, I am going to experiment with uh, some mineral spirits and a Q-tip, but all I'm going to do here is take a little bit of the contrast paint 
and a little in a SOTAR goes a long way. You don't need a whole bunch. I probably have too much there. But now hopefully we're gonna get some good color on this guy real quick. And again, sorry for the compressor guys. That's the penalty of airbrushing is you do hear a compressor. I have a really nice no-name compressor. Uh, the brand literally is called No Name. That works really, really well. There we go. And the way I'm airbrushing, if some of that brighter green shows through, I'm okay with that. You guys can see I'm just getting a nice consistent color with the airbrush. It's laying down nicely. The SOTAR is so nice because you get very good directional coverage. You don't get a ton of overspray, which is can be a nightmare with an airbrush. But again, I'm okay with the lighter color showing through. on this model. You can already see just how much it's changing. Some of the areas like in the gun, in the blades, I'm purposely going over it thinly because I want the lighter green to kind of pop. To save me time highlighting later on here. Kind of getting up in the undercarriage there, just kind of get, trying to get 
everywhere that needs the darker green. You can already just kind of see, yeah, it looks... So in comparison to the other one, this looks pretty blah. That's okay. Because I'm going to tell you guys how I've been highlighting. And it just changes the look of the entire model. that guy dry. So I thought I saw a couple spots on him that were not great. And I did. Added a little bit extra to him. Oh. There were a few kind of light spots in this one. Just needed a little bit of darkening. So there, we've airbrushed on our darker colors. Now, I've got to clean up my airbrush real quick. Oh wow, that is a pretty good drop in calls, Douglas. But I think that's also just kind of a sign of our economy here lately too, that uh, everything is kind of slowing down. Uh, as prices are going up, people aren't using services like they were. and. Uh, I mean, even business, even my stuff's slow. Um, so I think we're all kind of seeing that change in the American culture. Plus, everybody's saving up for Christmas. Uh, I have a feeling, I mean, Amazon, look, they're doing almost a second Prime Day just to lift sales today and tomorrow. Which, guys, Amazon links are in my video descriptions. Those help out the channel if you use them. Uh... I mean, it's just kind of one of those things. There's a lot going on. I think people are kind of slowing down on everything that they're doing. Um, and I, I'm no different right now. Um, so spending and all that kind of stuff has to kind of change for everybody. Um, I mean, it's a scary time to be alive. With everything that's going on. All right, airbrush cleaning, I think it's wrapped up here. Always take the time to clean your airbrushes. Yeah, everybody has their, their peak and their low times. I think it's always kind of a interesting thing to remember and keep in mind. Um, even as I'm learning, doing this as a business, you know, I didn't know what to expect and I've learned, I have not saved appropriately, uh, all kinds of stuff. It's been making for somewhat of a rough year this year. So every company kind of has to learn and ebb and bub and grow as we go through these kind of seasons. So, all right. Highlighting. Yay. This is the tedious part of the project. But also, personally here lately, the most rewarding part of this project, seeing what these models turn into, is pretty friggin' awesome. As you can see where I've started highlighting on this guy, I mean, it just makes his armor pop. And it's really a simple thing. Um, since I'm doing a, green, a dark green, I'm just coming back with a light green 
and going down the panel lines. And if you mess up, who cares? Um, just take your time and uh, just kind of stay on there. Now you could dry brush this too. It's a lot faster, but I'm kind of going with the paint chipped. You know, this is a under layer that's seeped into maybe a white underlaying primer layer and just kind of giving the plate a little bit more contrast compared to what it, what it had. Um, you know, if this was not a greenish model, I might do, and not so dark, I might have done a, just a wash to do this highlighting. And right now I'm just using Monument Hobby Light Green. So links for Monument Hobby are in my description, um, as well as a code that at checkout will give you 10% off your order. But basically I'm just running my brush along the edge here of the plate and just gives it a different look. Almost gives it a glow. Like this green might be too bright, but in all honesty, I just like the way it looks. And then I'll come back over the rivets. Anywhere that might get worn, I'm putting this lighter green. to just create a different effect and highlight on these raised parts, just give the model a bit of a different look. Oh, nice, Hank. I hope you enjoy it. I did get mine working. It's out there. I'll have to do a rehash on it. Uh, I've got mine out there doing their job. Because right now, with the weather fluctuations, I definitely have to keep an eye on the printers that I currently have sitting in the garage. I'm hoping to bring them out of the garage here in the next week, or next two weeks and actually get them up in the print shop with the rest of them. But uh, that'll just have to kind of kind of go, go with the flow here. Uh, if anybody's going to be in Orlando this coming weekend, uh, I will be at Model Palooza. I will have a booth set up there. But you guys can see how that light green is just changing the way El Drenato here looks. It's kind of really cool how one color can just change the whole feel of a model. Unfortunately, I think this paintbrush is just about on the on the dead side. Hopefully, it'll work out for you. Just don't do it. Apparently, at 7:30 at night. So <laughs> uh, that was, I guess, I just happened to try to do it when they were doing server update time. <laughs> oh, thread falling out of my brush there. But uh, 
yeah, especially compared to the Raspberry Pis, all that kind of stuff right now, the uh, the Beagle cams are the uh, the clear winner at the moment. Hopefully you enjoy those. I know I have been enjoying the V2. I really like the V2 with the manual focus um, and all that is really kind of makes it a lot better over the version one where you had to actually dismantle it to do the focusing. So you actually had to take the casing off the first version. <laughs> to uh, do anything with focus. So the V2 is definitely a step up over that older version. These dreadnoughts are just, I've been needing to paint them. I just haven't been painting. I just haven't been painting. I don't know why. I just kind of stopped. And now I'm really, <clears throat> really kind of, kind of digging back in. Ahsoka's ending was very well done. So I was very pleased with the way the that went. Wish they'd kind of elaborated more for the Balin skull part, but seeing the the statues of the hey JJ, how's it going, man? Seeing the statues of the father and the son and the uh, the destroyed statue of the sister, the owl, it was all just really good placement and connection between the two. So I think uh, Filoni did a really good job and is setting up setting us up for uh, the movie he's working on. So I'm uh, I'm interested to see the road we take. And what second part will be. I'm curious to see what what we're going to learn at Dathomir and all that fun stuff. And I do hope we get to see more uh, in the future in relation to Thrawn. So definitely want to learn more about where they're going to take him in the show compared to uh, compared to like the Heir of the Empire books and all that kind of stuff. I think there's a lot of cool stuff they can do here with him. And I think they should, so hopefully they will. What do you guys think of it? I've, I've just given all my opinion. I just, I just word vomited, so... <laughs> Agree or disagree with me?
but you guys can just see how coming around with that lighter color uh, just gives these so much more life than what you would expect. So even like this one that we just airbrushed, it's getting dry enough that I can start just kind of, I'm just running my, running my paint brush with very, a little bit of paint just down the edge and it just creates a beautiful line. You can push down, you can ebb and bud, you can do all kinds of stuff here, but it just creates a highlight that is, uh... you know, JJ, that's going to be a really hard one to do. I mean, I've seen like Eckhart Slatter and them with their suggestions and their thoughts and um, I think what we may see is a lot more CGI style maybe to kind of help. Yeah, it was, but I mean the shortness, I mean, that's almost the same length as a Mando se season. So we kind of knew it was not going to be long. Because Mando seasons are normally eight, right? I'm pretty sure they're only about eight. But yeah, just coming in with that little bit of green gives it kind of that wear look. This really kind of helps the model come to life a little bit. I could have avoided some of this with in my airbrushing, just not kept it a tighter beam and just not gone as close to the edge as I did, but I didn't. And it, plus it wouldn't be this bright green and I want this bright green color. But I think it looks cooler. It's my Warhammer unit, so I get to decide that. Yeah, I thought they were only 12, but I get what you, I totally get what you mean by uh, need longer seasons. I mean, Strange New World was, what, at least 10? So, yeah, running a little short, but I mean, if they're getting as far as they need to in the story, then good on them, but yeah. Well, I mean, they did CGI with like Tarkin and Princess Leia and all that kind of stuff. So it is one option they could do. And they're even doing it with Luke now. I mean... It just kind of depends on... One, if they continue that story arc, which they would be stupid not to. Um, but, you know, I don't run Disney. I live near it, but, well, I live close, but um, just kind of one of those things. It's, uh, I'm sure they'll, they'll come out with how they want to do it. that was one of the things about Rebel. She always had that mystical Jedi Force link that we didn't get in some of the other shows very often. Filoni was really good about promoting that. Um, in Clone Wars, he did it. I mean, it was very prevalent in Rebels. So to not keep that arc in there is... I just can't see them not doing it. So here's hoping that they do. And it's probably going to be a while till we see season two. 
with the writer strike and all that fun stuff. But I could be wrong. Yeah, but the problem is with doing the stand-in and trying to put his face on there, you're not going to have him. And a lot of him was his body language and how he carried himself. We're going to lose that. Um, no matter who we put in his place, we're losing some of that stoicism and just stuff that made him him, if, I, if I'm making any sense. Uh, oh, is the writer strike over? Hey, Steven, how's it going? I didn't know that was over. That's how attached to the world I am. I don't even know the writers accepted a deal. Steven, how's things going tonight? Hopefully you're having a good night. I'm just working on some detailing on some Warhammer minis that are on the need to get done list tonight. So I've done some airbrushing. Now we're just showing how I do some of my highlighting. This is one method that I do, it's just do it, but picking a color that is just so off the wall, doing the dark green, going in with the light green, I just love the look of it. Well, that's good that they came to an agreement. Hopefully it's a good one that's equitable for everybody. Is Andor getting a second season? Uh, no, I never even got into Starfield, JJ, unfortunately. Even though I've looked at some of the, the ship designs are kind of cool. I can tell I'm starting to get tired too. But I will reveal my favorite gold when we get to the end here. And probably what I may try doing is some Q-tips with some mineral spirits and maybe lightening some of this green up too. But I wanted to get this edging on just in case. I'm not even worried about it being straight because scrapes and stuff like that are never straight. So, yeah. 
I saw the Razor Crest. Uh, what else? I saw some people doing some pretty ingenuitive stuff in there. Because I know I saw people like the game would automatically aim for the center of your ship. Uh, so people were making that hollow and building frame, uh, boxy frame, so they could would shoot in the middle. It would just pass right through their ship. Stuff like that. Just random weirdness. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, I was seeing kind of interesting, cool kind of stuff about Starfield and ship design and all that. Uh, kind of popping around, uh, especially over on TikTok. I think I was seeing stuff like that. But yeah, from that bright green droid we saw earlier to this guy, I mean, it's just kind of moving along, kind of nice. Uh, I thought about it, but games like that, I get into it for like a couple weeks, and then I just kind of, meh. Uh, so I kind of give up on them. I shouldn't, but I do. Uh... So that's why I just didn't get into it. I've been playing uh, Halo Infinite again, uh, is what I've been playing. Now that I put the new heat exchanger in my desktop, I'm playing. I'm playing that a lot more. So, <clears throat> all right, guys. I'm starting to kind of run out of steam, but we took this guy from that bright green base to that in a very short amount of time. So, and the green was just the primer. I just primed it with that green. That's all I did. Um, and then just a little bit of green highlighting. We've made him look more like his partner here in crime. Now I'm going to show you my favorite gold, uh, when I'm painting. Um, this gold just does a fantastic job. It lays down, um, cause the gold on him, that's one coat. That was one time brushing it on. You guys can see. I mean, it just lays down beautifully. It's a beautiful gold. This will lay down gold over most colors. So, Atari 2600, what? <laughs> I know a lot of people that are stuck in Destiny. It Destiny has got a lot of people in it. And I hope it keeps going. Uh, I know I have family members that still play Destiny. I played Destiny 1, and then they, the old Destiny 2 came out when one of the sales pitch for De Destiny was there would never be a Destiny 2. We had a Destiny 2. So, again, having to spend all that money again and all that, keep going. Ugh. Broken record, broken record. All right. My favorite gold to paint with, to get a good, nice, bright gold, is by Citadel. And it's one of my favorites. That one right there. Citadel Retributor Armor. This is one of my most favorite golds to paint with. It lays down really, really well. And I'm going to show you guys right now, because we're going to paint that on the front of there. I mean, just the color. It looks really, really good. There's not too much glitter or anything in it. 
it's just a really kind of nice color. And I'm laying down over a dark color here, so you guys will definitely see what I mean. What's nice about it, a little bit goes a long way. And even laying over this darker color, it just lays down so gloriously that I don't have to do a bunch of work. One of the things too, you notice I'm going, I'm dragging downward on the feathers. That's letting me keep some of the darker ones, Let, letting some of the darkness stay. So going on with a thin layer in here is actually quite a great idea because it will keep that darker undertone to keep the layers in the layers and some separation um, and not have to come back with a lot of work to make the, uh, with a wash or something to kind of fill in. And create additional separation. So you guys just see there, it just looks fantastic. I love the way this gold pops against the, uh, against the green because that just lays down so expertly so beautiful that just makes my day It just looks fantastic on the front of these. Now I'm going to have to come back with Mechanicum Gray, probably some red on the missile tips, gunmetal and metalish over here, but just quick, nit, quick, nitty gritty. I mean, we just made this guy pop. We now have three tones, which is usually what required for a, a workshop, games workshop tournament. So this model is pretty much at the ready. I am going to come back up here though and the little eye slit I am going to make gold. This gentleman has served his chapter well and deserves a gold viewport. And no I'm not calling him the Donald Trump of the of the Legion. Now one thing I am going to do to make life a little easier I'm going to pop that off so I can get over to this emblem and do the same. I want to start with gold on this one. But I'm going to come in with some silver too. And, you know, just one of these things, just take your time painting and paint it till you're happy. Now, people like me, I'm never happy with my paint jobs. There's always something more I could try, something more I could do. So I actually have to walk away sometimes from my paint jobs to be done with a model. There we go. And while I'm here, He's going to get a golden cog. Usually I do them in brass, but I just want him to have some gold. He needs some gold on his tushy. But you can see I'm not putting a lot on my brush. 
And this is Citadel Retributor Armor, my favorite gold. There we go. I'll put his. Oh, there's a skull and crossbone right there too. Let's do it. Let's just do it. Do it all in gold. We're gonna golden him up. I know I probably should be doing him in ivory, but I kind of like the gold look. I like the way this gold pops against this. Don't be afraid to make mistakes. Like I got a little gold a little high there. Not even worried about it. Because I have this contrast paint, I can come back with that darker color and clean it right up. So, not even worried about it. I'm going to put his gun back in its slot here. And you guys can just see adding the gold just makes him pop. Now one of the things I need to do is I need to, one, put some PVA glue down, base him, and really kind of make them stand out a little bit more. Just checking over here, make sure there were no emblems. Let's check this guy. Yeah, there's no emblems there, but I'm gonna give him a golden cog too. All the golds, just because I like the way it's popping. We must honor our mechanica, their gold. that on there too. Now some of this, yep, I thought there was a skull on here. We're going to get that skull in gold. This will be a whole nother video because I'm going to have to do a lot of blue and white work in there. I want to come back with some gray work on this as well. I'm going to go ahead and golden up the skull here. Give it a bit of offset and the rest of the model. If you're entombed in a dreadnought, you have served your legion well and are serving it even more because they won't let you die. If you're in a dreadnought armor, you're a good warrior. All right, we got him fancy dancing. You guys can see even on this whirlwind, I've started with the gray work, green work on the side. Over here, pretty blah. Green work. Definitely kind of brightens it up. So, yeah. Oh, you're currently painting them too, huh? Yeah, these are just some of the vehicles I'm working on. I have not even started on the soldiers. Uh, I've got the lion I need to paint. <sighs> I'm waiting on some of the new sets because I ordered the Chaplain and Terminator armor. Uh, the new jump jet group with the jump jet captain and the new uh, close in action uh, dreadnought. So it's going to be a lot of fun, a lot of cool stuff to, uh, to hop in. But unfortunately, guys, I have run out of time tonight. Uh, I know I got started late, but unfortunately, time's just kind of limited today. I thank you guys all for hopping on, chatting, getting in the chat, talking. If you guys are interested, consider joining and becoming members like Reviews with Douglas and them where you guys get to actually get in the Discord, ask me questions, and kind of see more, see some of this stuff before it even gets here. And I just booped the camera. So definitely, and make sure you leave that thumbs up like for me because uh, those do help out the channel quite significantly and I really do appreciate it. So thank you guys. If you've got any questions about what you saw me painting with tonight, um, definitely feel free to ask, especially if you're looking at color schemes and stuff. Uh, uh, Chaplain doesn't come out uh, till Saturday, I think. I think they all come out this weekend. So 
Uh, mine are all just kind of pre-ordered. So yeah, the Chaplain's going to be freaking awesome in Terminator armor and such a different paint job. I'm really kind of looking forward to giving him a shot. Uh, yeah, whirlwinds. Good luck. Good luck finding them. Luckily I had two sitting around in storage. Um, just kind of, and I'm just kind of pushing into the dark angels. I don't know why I just all of a sudden got interested in them, but I did. So, um, loving the color scheme and the colors and the paint. So that's what I'm doing. So appreciate everybody for kicking around tonight. I thank you all and y'all have a good night.